Hi folks, it's just me again, your friendly neighborhood, Walter Shepard. Um, coming to you with some advice, advice um, that will help you in terms of encouragement. Now, over the past couple of weeks, um, I've noticed this, especially over the past couple of weeks, um, trying to reach people on Facebook with... Uh, um, with what we're supposed to do in terms of a watchman. We gotta let them know that danger is coming. We gotta let them know that uh, um, harm is heading their way. Uh, there's 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 a group of people, uh, the New World Order, all the One Worlders, they are out there. And we should be trying to get the people to understand that, that this whole world is coming to an end. But, and this is where the advice comes in. I have noticed that there are two kinds of people, basically, um, when it comes to those who are unsaved. There are those in the world who have absolutely no idea what's going on in the world. All they know is, is, is what TV tells them and what the media tells them, what newspaper tells them, um, what, what, what the radio news tells them. And that's all, that's all they know. That's all they care to know. And um, because of that, they have been totally duped. They've they've bought into um, they bought into the lies of the enemy. These are the people that sadly um, are going to um, fall away right away. Um, once when when um, when society crashes, these people are going to be so lost because they had no idea it was coming. Uh, they they may have heard um, slight rumors of it, but they're not prepared in any way. And they're not, um, and right now they're not willing. Um, if you've seen the movie Matrix, um, there's there's a, there's a line in there where the character Morpheus is trying to uh, he's trying to acclimate um, Neo to the real world, what's going on in the real world, and he has a line there that um, he says that these people are so hopelessly plugged into the system that they have no idea what's going on, and they are not ready to be unplugged. And that's, that's the people that I'm talking about right now in the real world. Those who are so tied into the media machine that um, they just believe everything. They, they, they trust the government. Um, they trust the, uh, the news sources. Uh, they, they trust the, the celebrities. Um, and they're so enthralled and they're so, they're so blinded by, by, by sports and TV and movies and, and all the glitz and glamour that the enemy uses to distract people that they have no idea what's going on. And when the time comes for society to crash, uh, they're, they're, they're going to fall by the wayside because they are totally unprepared. They have no idea that there's a storm coming. And we can try, we as watchmen, we as servants of the Lord, we as wise virgins, we as prayer warriors, uh, the only thing that we can do is pray. Um, we, can, uh, we, we, we have to pray like the Bible says, um, that the Lord would uh, grant them his spirit of wisdom and revelation, that they may get to know the Father better. Because it doesn't matter what kind of evidence you show them. You could be showing them all these newspaper articles, all these, all these internet news source articles, um, you could be showing them all these videos, and uh, they they will either ignore it or they 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 will just cast it off as being oh that's just some some conspiracy nut blah 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 blah. They have they they don't want to see anything negative of the world. They don't want to believe that this world is falling apart. And then there's the other group of people, those who can see the problems of the world. They can sense in their heart that uh, there is something happening. But with all these wars, what with uh, the economy being the way it is, what with education being the way it is, what with the government being the way it is, they suspect that something is happening. And they can feel in their heart that there's something negative in this world. But at the same time, they're keeping their heads in the sand. Again, you can... You can feed them all these news sources and all these stories pointing out the truth, but they're just going to stick their head further and further in the sand. 
um, unlike the other people. Uh, they don't have their heads in the sand. They're not uh, hiding from the truth. They've got on their rose-colored glasses, and as far as they can see, oh, the world is beautiful. The world is, 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 is excellent. There's nothing wrong with the world. So trying to reach these two groups of people is next to impossible. As prayer warriors, that is the best thing that we can do, is, is pray that the Lord would open up their hearts and their minds to see the truth of the world around them, and to pray against the enemy. Because remember, we're in a spiritual battle. It's not about people against people. It's not about the government against against the innocent. It's not about uh, the, the school sources against the innocent. It's not about this particular group out there in the world being against anyone. Because all the people of the world... All the all the sinners, even even those in the one world order, they have been so hopelessly lied to by the enemy, and 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 they've bought the lies. They believe the lies. Everybody in the world that has not had their eyes opened by the Holy Spirit, um, by the grace of God, and by the power of Jesus, they 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 can't see that because. The enemy has put a blinder on their eyes. He's put a veil over their head. And there's no way that these people want to see. Uh, I think for the most part, the people outside the kingdom who, who can sense that there's something going on, they simply don't want to believe the truth. Because if they fully accept the fact that the government is trying to create, well, I shouldn't say the government, but the people who have infiltrated the government, if they see the truth that there is a conspiracy out there, if they see the truth that, that, that the world is, is, uh, is being taken over by a group of evil people, if they see the truth that this planet is falling apart, they will be totally lost. I think I've mentioned this in, in, in another video, but these people, they have absolutely no hope because they see no need for Jesus, because they see, see no need for God in their lives, because they're, they're, they're fighting the conviction of the Holy Spirit. If they truly believe that the, the moon landing was fake, if they truly believe that, that the Illuminati and the Masons are there um, infiltrating all aspects of society, if they actually believe that, they would, they would be totally lost because they would have nobody to turn to. They would have nobody to trust. So with that in mind, um, that's one of the things that we can pray for, for them, that the Lord would open up their minds, that they can see the truth, and that they can hear the Holy Spirit pointing to Jesus. Because the Holy Spirit is shouting, is shouting so loud. He's shouting in that still small voice. He's shouting in a whisper. And they can feel it. They can feel the conviction. Whenever you Christians are out there talking to them, trying to reason to them, trying to show them the truth, they get convicted by the Holy Spirit. And when people feel backed into a corner, um, the first thing that they do uh, is, is that natural human instinct. They're, they're going to take fight or... or they're, they're going to take flight or they're going to fight. So either they will ignore you and shut you down and possibly unfriend you, uh, or, 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 or they're going to scream and rant against you. They're going to say, oh, you're just some conspiracy nut. Oh, no, the world has always been going on the way it always has. Oh, there's no such thing as God. Why isn't he here now? They're just going to contradict and, and, and knock down everything you say. So keep fighting the fight. Keep speaking to them. Keep sharing the love of God. Keep keep showing them the truth of, of, of the world out there with the news sources that you have, with the videos that, 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 that you're showing, because without that conviction of the Holy Spirit, they're not going to feel, and they're not going to see the way pointing to Jesus. And and they know in their hearts that they, they, they should be calling calling upon the Lord. They know in their hearts that they that they should be getting right with God. They know in their in their hearts that they should be living a better life. But they keep getting distracted by this world. And in one sense, it's not really their fault. Um, the lost and the hurting and and the sad the, the saddened and, and the downtrodden. In one sense, it's not really their fault. Yes, they have free will. And yes, they can choose to reject God or, or to accept Him. But at the same time, the enemy has created such a world that all the options available to them, um, 
the godly options are unappealing. There's no way these people want to want want anything to do with the church because Satan has made the church look really um, impotent, um, really unimportant, really irrelevant, really backwards and and obsolete and out of date. And he's made the 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 uh, the pleasures of the world so much easier to handle, so much easier to 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 desire. So based on the options available, uh, the lost people of the world, um, they're not going to choose um, this, the, the narrow path. They're, they're, they're going to choose um, the Broadway, um, the, the, the highway to hell, because it's that much more appealing. So we still have to be out there um, pointing the way to Jesus, um, trying to expose the enemy. But again, it's not a battle of one group against another group. We're not supposed to be... Um, fighting, you know, um, this this particular group or that particular group, because it's not a battle of flesh. It's not one person against another. We're, we're supposed to be praying against the enemy, because it's the enemy that has put blinders over these people. It's the enemy that has made the options that much more appealing. <sighs> so it's um, it's a spiritual battle, and, and, and we all know that. But at the same time, we have to recognize um, Luke 19, verse 41 and that was when Jesus, um, uh, I believe he was on top of the Mount of Olives, and he was looking over Jerusalem. And he cried. He cried for those people because he knew that all the people in Jerusalem, that there would be a, um, a portion of them, a small portion of them that would be in heaven. But he knew the majority of them were going to reject um, everything godly, and they were going to end up being separated by God um, or, or separated from God. And he knew that um, they were on a one-way road to hell. Um, their choices, they had no idea what they were doing, making the bad choices. If, if, if they accepted the truth, their lives would have been better. But Jesus knew that there was going to be some people who would accept the truth, and there would be a lot of other people that are going to reject the truth. And that's why Jesus cried. So we have to recognize that too, that out there in the world, out of these 7 billion people, uh, a large minority will accept the truth. They will be in the kingdom. And, uh, okay, that's that's the answering machine back there. Um, that's that voice. I will just uh, let it go because I don't want to interrupt this. And and they didn't leave a message. So, so um, but apart from the large minority that is that are actually going to be in the kingdom, there's still um, a, a, a um, large large minority and a small majority still the majority of the people um and that's the sad thing and i don't mean to take it lightly but the majority of the people um are going to reject god they're going to reject jesus they're going to fight against the conviction of the holy spirit and they're, they're going to harden their hearts and they're, they're going to reject everything that you tell them and they're going to end up in hell and we just have to accept that but we can't judge which people are which because we don't know their hearts. We don't know their lives. We don't know what's going on. We don't know inside how they feel about God. We may know how they express themselves about God, but that's not necessarily how they actually feel about God. Because again, that fight or flight things kind of thing, thing comes into play there. So they may outwardly say that they're going to reject God or that they do reject God. But it could be just something they're trying to convince themselves of. They're, they could be just lying to themselves. And inwardly, they do long for the, for, for, the, uh, for the salvation of the Lord. So keep that in mind. And when we're talking to people, um, uh, we have to keep in mind Proverbs 26, verse 5, and Proverbs uh, 22, 11. I think those are the right ones. Or is it... Uh, but, but anyway, um, sorry... I was a little rushed putting these together. I believe it's 22.11, but, but anyway, what I'm trying to say with these particular two verses in Proverbs, and you will recognize them. One of them says, um, Answer a fool according to his folly, or he will be wise in his own eyes. So there are times when we're talking to non-believers that we have to defend the gospel, that we have to um, come against the things that they're saying, because a lot of things that they're saying are, 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 are against the Lord, are against the Bible. Um, some, sometimes they're God-haters. So sometimes we have to answer a fool according to their folly. But then we also need discernment because the following verse says, Do not answer a fool or you will be like him yourself. So pray to the Lord that he will give you discernment and that the Holy Spirit 
will be able to open your eyes to see what kind of person you're talking to and, and how to address that, that particular person. Because sometimes we just have to shut our mouths and say, okay, fine, okay, fine, you're on your own. And then there are some times when, you know, we, in a sense, we have to shake these people and say, come on, can't you see the truth? It's so obvious. So, um, so pray for discernment that the Holy Spirit will, will help you to understand what to say to what particular kind of person that you're talking to. And lastly, um, this one comes from, um, uh, where is that? Oh yeah, hold on, I got these totally mixed up. So it's Proverbs 26 verse 4, do not answer a fool. And it's Proverbs 26 verse 5, answer a fool. Uh, so verse 4, do not, and verse 5 is do. And that's in Proverbs chapter 26, verses 4 and 5. And uh, this is the mix up here. Uh, my P's look like R's. <laughs> uh, okay, and um, lastly, uh, this is some things um, when we're dealing with the hard-hearted, because uh, there's a lot of hard-hearted people out there that we would like to approach with the truth and try to speak to them, but sometimes um, they're just going to shut you down or shut you out, and there's no way that they're absolutely going, going, going to listen to you. So Revelation 22 verse 11 says, Let him who is doing wrong, or let they that are doing wrong, continue to do wrong, and let they that are vile continue to be vile. But let those that are doing right continue to do right, and let those who are holy continue to be holy. So sometimes, um, again, we got to pray for, for discernment, because there are people out there that there's no way they're going to listen to anything you say. So um, the Bible more or less gives us permission to say, okay, I've done my duty. Um, your soul is in your hands. You choose what you want to do. So um, that's my advice is um, contact the Holy Spirit. Pray to the Holy Spirit. Talk to the Holy Spirit and ask him. Whenever you're about to um, talk to, uh, to to somebody, to share the gospel or to or to expose um, the lies of the enemy, talk to the Holy Spirit. Ask Him to speak through you or to reveal to you or to show you um, how you should be approaching whatever person um, that you are trying to approach. And that way um, we will be continuing to do our duty and we will be God's hands and feet down here and we will be um, Jesus in our place. Because um, we're, uh, we're supposed to be like Jesus um, in all our choices and all that we do. Uh, we're supposed to be our own version of Jesus. Because Jesus himself is authoring us into his likeness, into his character. So um, you will be your version of Jesus. Um, the other Christians will be their version of Jesus. And I will be my version of Jesus. Um, and ultimately, we will all have the likeness of Jesus. So we will all have the same characteristics and the same and the same um, holiness as Jesus. And Jesus is the likeness of the Father. So the more that we're like Jesus, the more godly we are. So continue to pray and keep reading the Bible, remember, cover to cover. And uh, continue to be a blessing down here um, to the lost and hurting um, around you. Because there's a time when we should be sharing the gospel, and there's a time when we should just be a friend. That's all. We don't have to always be blabbing about the Lord. We don't always have to be blabbing about end times. Sometimes the people of the world, they just want a friend there. And, um, and um, we can be that. We can be that friend. Uh, we can be that friend in Jesus that, uh, that everybody needs. So continue to shine, people. Uh, be salt and light. So uh, that's it. Um, take care. Stay in prayer. Uh, we'll see you in Jesus' kingdom somewhere over there. And I'm sure we're going to see you in the air somewhere. Um, already, uh, remember, Jesus rules. Oh.